as you look, it's of course empty. The pews, and I can just practically see the faces of the people and where they sit. Yeah, it's kind of like I know who's there and who's not. <laughs> but it's wonderful to have all of you who are here today. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have given us. We ask that you might be with all people, wherever they might be. Give them a sense of your peace. And even in the midst of their longing for normalcy, help them see that you are with us. That we human beings have been adapting for thousands and ten thousands of years. So help us to move forward in ways that declare your peace and your victory. We thank you for all these things and for all your blessings. In Christ's holy name, amen. Let's start outside. This is First Lutheran Church. I'm going to try to do a live cast for my other two churches, Partial United Church of Christ and the Country Church, which is located north of Plaza, about, about 13 miles. It's called Shell Creek. But it's a beautiful day. Let me look at my watch. It is 20 degrees, so not so bad. I'm going to go ahead and ring the bell because if we're having church, we might as well let people know it. And I might as well get in a little bit of a workout today too. I'm going to share with you the word of God, and I'm going to remember that we are all connected through all of this. Good morning to uh, Yenny and to Jim. Uh, yeah, amazing to see friends from a while ago. Good morning to Helen. She's my, she's the very, very best uh, landlord in the world. She uh, has let us live for the past 12 years on an eight acre acreage. So I can, uh, you know, throw that down with some of my farmers and ranchers. Yeah, I got eight acres, three goats, two horses. Pretty amazing, isn't it? We're so blessed in so many ways. And wherever you are, I hope that you take a time to see your blessings. I don't know if you saw the meme this morning. It said, Dear God, be with all those pastors who are going to try to do live streaming. Help them not look like they're some sort of Bin Laden capture video. <laughs> so in the midst of this newness, we continue to move forward. I want to talk a little bit about vessels. One of the things we might be missing is our communion wear. Churches are having to decide, hey, are we going to do communion? Are we going to do virtual communion? I don't know how that would happen. Oh, this is some of our stuff for uh, folks that might be in need. We want to share. That's what one of the things that God, God's church is calling us to do. For those of you who are from Plaza, I am uh, grabbing the secret key that will unlock the communion wear case. But uh, don't tell anyone. Yeah, what are vessels? These are called chalices. They hold wine, or depending on your theological perspective, they hold the very grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. Lutherans, of course, believe in that. But we also know that there are different understandings about what Holy Communion is. In fact, Holy Communion is one of the things that both unites us and sometimes divides us as God's people. And yet in the midst, what are vessels? We are vessels. We are called to be filled to the brim with God's grace, to know that we are able to share, even as we're filled to overflowing, we should share what God has given us. And so we are there to help others. 
We are there to lift one another up. We are there to care for each other. We've got other vessels. Cream of mushroom soup, not my favorite until you put it in a casserole and then you can't beat it. It holds things. It holds things that give life and sustenance. Other vessels. Well, as I walk out, garbage cans are vessels too. They serve a purpose. They are called to be filled with things that we don't want. And you know what? Right now, I hope people are thinking about recycling, thinking about how we can uh, use life. A reading from John's Gospel. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, for he was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. I'm going to stop right there. What is sin? Sin is when we fall short of God's glory, God's plan for us. Everyone has fallen short. Everyone has let others down. Everyone has been in a situation in which they feel like they could have done better, should have done better, and yet God loves us anyway. God loves each one of you. As we're gathered together this morning, please know that you are held up in prayer wherever you might be. Let's pray for those people who can't do Facebook Live, some of the people who would be sitting in the pews here at First Lutheran. Technology can be a difficult thing for them, and so I encourage you to help them figure this out. We don't know if it'll be weeks or a month or so, or hopefully that's it, but we do know that in the midst of this, God's church continues to function. We uh, bring greetings to John and Robert and Denise, some of my, we got a few folks there uh, from Partial. We bring greetings to all who are gathered this morning. We just ask blessings upon all of you. I see a couple other pastors. Hello to Martha and others. I don't know if we're going to keep doing this. We can probably learn to do it better. I remember the first time I ever preached, I just thought, man, I've told everyone all that I know about God. How could I ever tell them anything more? And the amazing thing is we continue to learn more about God as we move forward in life, as we read God's scripture. Let's get back to the man who was born blind. It starts with the blame game. That's why many of you might have said, I'm not so sure about this church thing. What's up with this church thing? I mean, it seems like sometimes people can be a little bit judgy in church. My question is, who are the people who are blind? Are you blind to the needs of others? Are you blind to the need to have God in the midst of your life? Are there people sometimes blind to the fact that the way you look, whether you have a few tattoos whether you wear your hair in a different way, whether you have a few piercings, the bottom line is that God loves you. God's church should be blind, but not blind to the needs of those that surround us. I want to hear about some of those stories in which others have brought help and hope to you. We need to hear some of those stories. I want to share one story. This is the baptism area of First Lutheran Church. The font was made by a former pastor, Bob Pestel, who's from Western North Dakota and is now retired. He made most of the custom woodwork in this place. He had a vision when we were just, not just, but when we were one of those white churches in the middle of town, well, white in more ways than one. One of those white churches that you could look at and had a steeple and traditional. He had a vision of a church in which 
We didn't have stairs that people had to walk up and down, and thank God for that. On any given Sunday when we are gathered uh, with uh, two dozen or more people who gather here, many of them would have difficulty with stairs. And so his vision, Pastor Bob's vision, was a vision in which everyone could come into God's church. How do we come into God's church? Well, Lutherans tend to say baptism. Baptism is how we enter God's church. Baptism is the way in which we connect, the way in which we realize that, yeah, we belong to God. We're part of this church. So I want to tell you a story about baptism and about, and about water. Back in the day, people in our area know all about the flood. Not the Noah flood, but the flood in Minot, North Dakota. It's been more than 10 years. We had several volunteers that went up to First Lutheran Church in Minot, another First Lutheran, and helped them move all their stuff so it wasn't wrecked by the flood. And so we were given this, this dove, a symbol of God's Holy Spirit, a symbol of baptism, a symbol of all that God has given to us. And so every time when I baptize a child or baptize a teenager, sometimes when I get to baptize an adult, it reminds me that we're part of something bigger. We're part of something that God has given us all. Do we take the opportunity to realize that we're part of something bigger, or sometimes do we just hunker down and say, oh, we're so small, we're insignificant. What difference can I make? What difference can I make in a church that has a few dozen people, and sometimes we have 40 or 50? Well, God can use you wherever you are. Even if you are stuck at home with your spouse, not in my case, I mean, that's a blessing to me, of course, but even if you're stuck at home with kids that are bored and don't know what to do, how is God using you as a blessing? It's important to remember that. Every Sunday we try to make sure that people have a chance to know that they belong, matter. And so one of the things we do at this church is at the beginning of church, the first 10 or 15 minutes are focused on kids. And so I invite the kids to join me back here at the baptismal font where many of them were baptized. I've been here for 14 years. I've baptized many a kid and a few adults and teens as well. But we know that we belong to God. As we're gathered virtually today, let us remember that we belong to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Jesus. We give you thanks that he showed us what to do. He was first baptized, and so we baptize those who claim his name. He created the Holy Supper that we call Holy Communion. And even when we're not able to come together in communion, we know that we are still called and gathered. Be with all your people throughout the world. Help us not only to seek hope, but to Give hope to others. Help us by our own actions to show that we have a peace that passes all understanding. Help us to return to where it all began. In your baptism.